Okay, I want to talk about what a polyfill is and how you create a polyfill. A polyfill is just a bit of functionality that you are writing in vanilla JavaScript to replace something that is potentially native in other browsers or in other places. So I've got Node running here in my terminal, and I'm running JavaScript files using Node. I'm going to try to check and see if a couple of methods exist. So on the array object, I want to know if there's a method called just letter. And on the date object, I want to know if there's a freaking date method. These don't exist anywhere in any browser or node or anything. They're just something that I'm inventing to say, well, let's pretend that some JavaScript engine out there has these two methods, and I want to be able to call them everywhere. So what we do is we check with a simple if statement, if not array dot, and then the name of the method. So this is a method that I'm trying to call, or I want to call. I'm checking to see if it exists. If it doesn't, I'm writing out this method right here, just letter method missing, or frickin' day method missing. I want this method. So somebody, some JavaScript engine has an interpretation of this. I want to build it. So that's what a polyfill is. I'm going to write the code that does what this method does. My idea for this method is that um, if you call just letter on some array object, it's going to discard everything in the array except for strings that have a letter that you're looking for. So this is my array that I'm writing out here. And this one's got an A in it this one's got an A, and this element has an A. So those three items from the array, they all have letter A's. So if I passed A into that method, just like this here, like if I uncomment that this is going to fail because I don't have this method, I'll show you. So it fails. This method doesn't exist. But this is how you would implement it. So if the polyfill existed, you could call this anywhere. My array this is the array that I created. I call the method, I pass in a string value, and I'm going to filter it. So let's build that. The way you do it is with the prototype object. JavaScript being a prototype based language means that you can extend things by using the prototype keyword. This goes to the prototype object that array inherits from. We are now adding this property to the prototype of all array objects. Not just one, but all array objects. So every time I create an array like I have right here, this has a prototype that now includes this method. So we can call this method. Now, it's not doing anything, but just by the fact that I've created that, now I'm not getting an error. I'm getting undefined because this is a function. I have put no return value in it. Functions by default return undefined. So when I call this, undefined is what I get back. OK, let's put the actual functionality in there, show you a few things. When you want to refer to the array that's calling this method, what you need to do is use the keyword this. That will reference this array. However, you have to do this. When you are creating something on the prototype, make sure you're using function, the keyword function not the ES6 arrow function. ES6 arrow function is not going to work here. We have to use function. So I'm going to create an array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the array. So I'm running filter on this. This is going to be names, this array right here. Now I'm passing in a letter, so I need a variable to hold that. So this A is going to be put into this variable. And I'm calling filter. Now I can here use an arrow function if I want. That's not going to uh, impact anything. It's just if I want to use the keyword this, I need to use function. All right, so this filter, I'm going to be passing in each of the individual items to the filter. And then this is just going to return only when the uh, array item index of and letter is greater than negative one. So I'm just running the built-in index of method on this string. 
Now I should also do a check here um, for the type of to make sure that the type of is string as well. So we could do that. We can say if type of item does not equal um, string return false. So we can we can check that as well. So this would be something extra if we wanted to put it in there. I'm just going to keep it simple and say if you don't find this letter, so it doesn't have a position, we're going to return false. And if it is greater than negative one, the string does exist in there. We're returning true. And now we will return the array. So this is the new array that we've created using the filter method, the array filter method that that does exist in the browsers. So we are now building the new array. We run this again, and there it is. Here's the original, and here's the filtered one. If we change this from letter A to a letter D, there we are, just the ones with the letter D. Clear this off. We may as well run it with the uh, number in here. We'll do, we'll do the check as well. So there we are checking to see if the type of is string, otherwise we'll reject it. So if I come in here and I put in a number and I'll just to make some space, I'll delete one of these and I'll put in an object with a property A equals one. There we go. All right, so now I have an array with some strings, an object, a number. We could throw a Boolean in there as well. Same sort of thing. And there we are. So the original array has strings, objects, numbers. Those are all being filtered. It's only going to do the comparison on the actual strings. And there's the ones with the letter D. Okay, so that's an example with an array. But it's not just arrays that you can do prototypes with. You can do prototypes on any kind of object. So here's a date example. I've got the date object. I'm checking to see if there's a frickin' day method. If not, we're getting the message that it doesn't exist. There it is. Okay, that works. So I want to build a prototype method here. And what we're going to do is we want to um, return, like right now, there is a built-in get day method for JavaScript date objects. And that returns the number 0 through 6. 0 being Sunday, 6 being Saturday. All the days are numbered. So I want a method that gives me something a little bit more substantial with the actual name of the day. So we'll do that. We'll say date, not data, but date. And prototype has to be spelled correctly too. Again, we use the word function, not the ES6 arrow functions, because we do want to use this. We have now created the method frickin' day on the date object. And we will say, let's do a uh, switch case statement here. So we'll do switch on um, this dot get day. There we are. So what we're doing is we're going to have a date object down here. And yeah, we'll just log it out. So new date, that will create a date object. So if I say new date, it's going to grab my current timestamp. It's going to make a date object. Now, with this date object, I want to call this method. So there we are. That's the name of it. So I'm calling this method right here. It's going to go to the prototype. It's going to find that method, and it's going to call it. Inside of here, the keyword this is going to refer to the date object itself, and we're going to call get day. This is going to give us those numbers, 1 through 6. So if I just, uh, here, just as an example, just to show you what it is doing, that it is working. There we are. Return get day. If I run this. Oh, yeah, I need to have a case statement. Okay. I just need to put a case statement in there so it doesn't give me an error. There we are. 
There we are. Five. That's the number being returned from get day. So I'm calling this method, which runs this function, and it's returning this, which is the number five. Today is Friday, so five. All right. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and create the cases for all the numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There they are. And then for each one of these, we're going to return a string, which is today is oops, zero is Sunday. There we are. And then just update these to the appropriate days. And then we will have our frickin' date method. And this is a polyfill, because that's what we're building here. Polyfills. And Friday and Saturday. Save and run. And there we are. Today is frickin' Friday. Great. So that is what a polyfill is. A polyfill is a method that you're adding on to some other existing object. You're providing functionality to a browser or to some JavaScript engine like Node, which doesn't already exist in that browser. If it did, like if I was looking for the array sort method, so if not array.sort, So if sort doesn't exist, I should see this message appear at the very top. I have forgotten a very important part here, and that is the prototype keyword. That's where these methods exist. I'm checking for ones that exist on the prototype object. So I should be doing that all the way through here checking to see if they exist on the prototype because that's where we're adding them, that's where we want them to exist. The methods don't belong, there we are, it disappears now. We don't see this message. So if array prototype sort, there's the message, it does exist. It does not exist. If you add something to the prototype, what you're doing is you're adding it to all of the objects that are of this type. If you are adding it directly, like I had written here, array.sort or array.justletter, you're adding it to a specific instance of, so one specific array. You're looking to see if that one specific array has the, the property. So prototype, this is where these methods should be going. This is where we should be checking. Very important. Sorry, I skipped that earlier. Okay, so if you found that useful, uh, please share that. If you have any comments, questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.